Hey, I hope you're doing well today. And today I've got something really exciting to show you, which is a RAG self-learning agent. So this is actually learning continuously on autopilot. You don't even have to do anything at all, okay? So I'll give you a little demo. I'll show you how it all works. If we look here, I do have an RSS feed. So we have the RSS feed URL. I'll, I'll also show you how to get all these in a second as well. So we have the RSS feed URL here. Now, if we test the event, what we're left with here is some information about the creator, the title, a link, publish date, content. Now, unfortunately, this isn't really providing all the article, right? We're only getting a snippet or, or a summary of the article. But I thought of a workaround with this. So if we actually look at this, we do have a link and that link goes directly to the article. All right. So if we go to the next step, I have an HTTP request here. I've just put in the URL from the link here. Okay. Now, if we actually test that step, that's going to bring the whole HTML document pretty much. Now that's better, but it's a whole mess because we can't read or understand anything of what's going here, nor do we want to have that go to our vector store. But if we come back over here, I have made some code, which is going to strip away all the HTML. Okay. And then it's going to leave us with a nice structured data, allowing us to upload this directly to our vector store and only putting in the information that we want to put in there. Okay. Now, if I test this step, we can see here that this is a lot, right? This is a whole document. But after testing this step, all the HTML is gone. And we're also left with structured JSON that we can see right here. So we have the content, which is the article itself. If we come all the way down, we also have the publish date and I've just added an extraction date as well, just as an extra little thing. So if we actually come over to the default data load over here, I have the metadata for the publish date, for the extraction date, and also the content, which is the article itself. Now, why is this important? Well, if we want to speak with our agent and we want, obviously, in, in some cases, we want the latest information. In, in this case, let's say search engine optimization. So search engine optimization is obviously always updating its algorithm changes, Google changes, strategies change. So having the published date in there allows us when we query the AI agent and we only want the latest information. Otherwise, we would have to go to the vector store and start deleting all the information. And, you know, now it becomes a, a nightmare as well. So that's how that works. Now, if I just test this step just to show you, um, testing the workflow here. So we can see this one triggering, um, gets the HTML, it strips away all the crap from the HTML, goes through, uploads, creates the embeddings as well, and everything should be in our vector store. So we'll go check. Now I don't have any records in here. There we go, we've got 14 now. And I'll just have to refresh this, sir. And if I refresh that, we will have our information in here. My internet wasn't so slow. There we go. So we can see right here, we have the publish date. We have the extraction date as well. Now you can add more meta metadata if you like as well. You could add categories. You could add, um, if you wanted, you could have titles and, and so on and so forth as well. It's really up to you. It's, you know, um, you don't just have to follow this exactly how it is. It's really up to you. And obviously we also have our content in here as well. Okay. So based on this now, so let's say for this, okay, so this is about, I, I don't even know what these articles are about, right? So how to strengthen your brand's authority. Now, if we actually query our, our, what the, if we actually query our AI agent here, okay, so how can I strengthen my brand identity? I think that's what it was. Now, based on that, it can actually go through the vector store. Now, take and retrieve all the information and answer our question. Okay, so let me just bring that up a bit. So now we can see, based on the information that was created from that article that was put into the vector store, we now have all that information accessible through our AI agent as well. Okay. So this is really exciting stuff. And I think it's a good approach if you want to create agents which are always learning topics or certain things in an industry that you're interested in or that you want to be always up to date with the latest information in. This can be really, really powerful in the right hands. So this is all working on autopilot. So if we actually look at our RSS feeds here, we can trigger this 
to be run every day, every minute if we wanted to, you know, we probably wouldn't do that, but um, it can be run every day, every week, or whatever you want it to be set for, okay? Now, you can also create several different RSS feeds. You could have 20 different blogs and articles in here. You could have different types of, um, of, of blogs and information as well, as long as you're creating, you know, all the metadata, um, you're also creating separate namespaces and whatnot as well. And then we can have all this be running on autopilot, which is then feeding all this information straight to our AI agent. And then our AI agent is now self-learning based on the information that we're giving it on a daily basis, just running on absolute autopilot. We're not even doing a single thing at this point, okay? Now, to utilize this even further, let's say you wanted to, you know, you were into uh, search engine optimization. You wanted to get the latest strategies, the latest tips and, and so on and so forth, right? You could then turn this into some sort of SEO blogging agent as well, which utilize all the best tips and strategies of search engine optimization to improve your blogs and articles as well. So that is one use case you could use this for. But what's really cool about this is that you could take anything that you want, any niche, any industry, input its RSS feed, deliver information. And whenever you ask this agent something in regards to whatever it is, it's gonna have that information at your fingertips on standby, ready to go. And this is why I think it's a very powerful concept in the right hands for the people who really know how to utilize this. So looking at the setup a little further, we're just going and making an RSS trigger. So we just type in RSS and we see here, we get an RSS feed trigger. Now. You can set this, as I said before, to whatever time that you want, every minute, every hour, every day. I think once a day is plenty, especially for things like articles and blogs, especially if you have, you know, you might have 20 RSS feeds going, right? Um, for the feed URL, what I've done here is I've just gone to ChatGPT. I use Abacus, but I, I'm still using ChatGPT through it. Now, all I've asked it here was, I need the top performing, most valuable information blogs with RSS feeds related to SEO. I will need the RSS feed links as well. The information should be up to date, uh, latest information with recent blogs in the last days. So I don't want, you know, to get RSS feeds for blogs that aren't even bloody, you know, active anymore, right? So I use deep research for this as well. It's probably overkill, but I thought I'd use it anyway, who cares? And then we can see here, we're getting all these RSS feeds related to SEO blogs. Now, obviously, if you click this, you're just going to get this. This is the RSS feed right here. Okay. So we take this link here, we copy that. We come over here. Now in the feed URL here, all we do is just we go here and we paste that link in. And once we click fetch test event, we'll see the RSS feed comes straight through. And there we go. Now I'll just delete that one there though. Now for the HTTP request, all we're doing here is this obviously HTTP request. We click that and everything we can leave pretty much um, as is, okay? But I'll just come back over to this one here. Now, as you can see, we do have a met uh, method of get. Our URL though is from the RSS feed. So if we actually go back and we trigger the RSS feed again, now it's going to deliver that link over. Now, when we come back to HTTP requests, we will have that link show in right here. Okay, so this is a moz.com. Um, that's the link to the article, right? So we test that step again. All right, so then we open up the code and this is a very simple piece of code here. It's just cleaning things up, okay? And then outputting and returning the content, the published date and the extracted date. That's all we want. So if we come back over here and we test this step, we're then left with some clean information, some clean data for us to use. If we come over here now and we open up the default data loader, this is where we want to set the metadata as well to, so that when it's retrieved in the vector store, um, it also is retrieving you know, by, it could be for categories, it could be for, for anything, anything that you want to set it to. So if we actually open up our code, now which one was it? Here we go. Now, all I've done here is I've just put the name as content and I've just dragged that over here, but it's actually from the merge node, but I just won't use that because it's connected to everything else. But as you can see, it's just simply taking the content from here, dragging it in here, okay? 
And then we scroll the way down, we do have the publish date, which we drag over, and also with the extraction date as well. So now this is actually providing metadata for us as well in our vector store. So if, for instance, we had information that we wanted to retrieve, but we wanted only the latest information from the last week, maybe the last month, we wanted to neglect and ignore information from say six months ago, we could do that based on the publish date. Okay. Now in terms of the actual AI agent setup here, it's very simple. Um, I have a very simple prompt in here. It's just, you are a highly efficient chatbot and your task is to answer questions related to SEO by utilizing a vector store provided for you. Uh, just some constraints. Answers must only be generated from information provided in the vector store. So it's just a very tiny little prompt, which is good because we want to you know, reduce costs and everything as well. Um, if we come over here, this is just data name is set as SEO. Description of the data contains data on SEO. Very, very simple. Our vector store is just the Pinecone index. So this is just the index that you previously made in Pinecone. In my case, it's called documents. Okay. And well, you don't even have to name it. You can just select it here. So we have that there as well. And then we have the embeddings as well, which is just the same here. Uh, text embeddings three small so make sure you're using the same embedding that you've set up when you were making your index in your uh, embeddings here as well okay and i'll show you the merge node really quick as well so it's just mode set as append uh, we have four inputs okay and you can bring it all the way up to 10 there you go so if you want to have 10 rss feeds at the same time you could and all you would have to do essentially is just duplicate all these okay so you place these, let's say we had them right here. Okay. Now for each of these little uh, nodes here, we just put it straight to the inputs. Okay. And that's all we have to do. Everything will run on its own. It'll go straight to our vector store, get all upload and whatnot. And it's all accessible via AI agent, which is accessing the vector store. Very simple, very easy, but extremely powerful in the right hands. But that's it for today's video. So I hope you learned something new. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do want to grab the template, I will have it over at my school community as well. If you want to do that, we have a nice community. It's really, really nice people in there. I'm enjoying it a lot. And maybe I'll see you there. See you next time.